Former Texas Governor James Hogg's dying wish was for a tree. Before he passed away in 1906, he told his loved ones that he wanted a pecan tree to be planted at the head of his grave. He wanted the nuts to be given to the people of Texas with the dream of making the state a land of trees. Honoring Hogg's request, the State Horticultural Society planted two pecan trees at the head of his grave. In time, their nuts were distributed across the state. In 1919, the pecan tree became so popular that it was named the State Tree of Texas. 250 to 300 years old. That's how old this tree is. Trees connect us in many ways. We gather under them, seeking their shade on a hot day. We admire them for their beauty. We see them as a link to the past and hope for the future. Every tree tells a story, and some of them have great stories to tell. Our Texas state parks contain many remarkable trees. Three of them have risen to such a level of historical importance that they have been officially registered among the famous trees of Texas. These are their stories. In South Texas, there's a very special kind of tree that isn't commonly found much farther north than the town of Goliad. It's called an Anakwa. It's A-N-A-C-U-A, sometimes A-N-A-Q-U-A. Its nickname is the sandpaper tree. And it gets that nickname because the, the leaves are very rough, like sandpaper. It's very likely that they were using these leaves as sandpaper back when the mission was active. Imagine using leaves to do all this work. The Spanish began colonizing South Texas in the late 1600s, and they built missions to convert natives to Christianity and to deter the French. In 1749, they settled Mission Espiritu Santo in what is now Goliad. The Spanish built quite a few missions and presidios. The main goal for these missions and presidios was to keep the land in Spain's name, don't let it fall to anybody else. The mission shut down in 1830 after Mexico gained independence from Spain. But as the abandoned buildings fell into disrepair, an anaqua tree sprouted from the ruins. A century later, the land was now part of the United States, which was in the midst of the Great Depression. The Civilian Conservation Corps had recently been created to provide young, unemployed men with jobs. One CCC unit was dispatched to Goliad to rebuild the missions for a new state park. What we see today, most of that was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC planned to rebuild the mission, but something had to be done about the Goliad Anakwa that was now a large, mature tree growing out of the ruins. Rather than cutting it down, it did have to move. It was in the way of their work, so they needed to move it one way or another. Architect Rayford Stripling, who was leading the CCC effort to rebuild the mission, later commented, I couldn't stand to cut that tree. He decided to save it. So they dug an 18-foot diameter root ball and dragged that tree from its original location to where it is today. That's a massive undertaking to move a mature tree like that. They undertook those massive efforts just to save the tree's life. It lived, so that was incredible in itself, and now it's kind of like a centerpiece to the mission. It's history, it's recognition as something beautiful that we wanted to save. We're super grateful to the CCC that they did take the huge extra mile of saving, saving this tree. Rising to 103 feet, Old Baldy stands as a stately beauty along Austin's Onion Creek in McKinney Falls State Park. This bald cypress tree serves as a home for birds and bees and an object of fascination for all who see it. So Old Baldy is this awesome giant behind me. This tree is actually about 550 years old. 
the oldest tree we have in the park, actually one of the oldest trees in the state of Texas. Bald cypress trees are a member of the redwood family, and like their west coast cousins, they can get pretty big. Its widest point around its base is actually about 16 feet. So if you could imagine going to hug Old Baldy, that would be a pretty big hug. And watch your heads as we're coming in. Old Baldy grows near the park's rock shelter overhang, where evidence of human habitation goes back 8,000 years. From the late 1600s to the early 1800s, a portion of El Camino Real de los Tejas ran through this area. Travelers of these trails and trade routes could find shade and shelter under the towering bald cypress trees that grew along Onion Creek. In the year 1716, there was actually a Franciscan priest that was traveling through this area. And we have written record um, that he actually did make note of Old Baldy in his diary. It's pretty wild to think about. That was over 300 years ago now. Today, a trail and footbridge lead visitors to Old Baldy. You guys can see Old Baldy here in front of us. Old Baldy has seen a lot of changes. This tree has actually seen more visitors since the park opened about 50 years ago than it had in its entire life before then. We are within city limits of Austin, Texas, which is a very quickly growing city. So it's really great to know that Old Baldy is protected in our park here. It is a magnificent tree. Again, you get to this part of the trail and, and you can't help really but to just stop and look up in awe and, and, and just take a few moments to appreciate Old Baldy. The Texas Gulf Coast is beautiful, but it can also be deadly. When Hurricane Harvey made landfall in Rockport in August 2017, Texans lost their homes, and some even lost their lives. After the storm hit, many worried about one longtime resident of Goose Island State Park. Over the centuries, a very special live oak has spread its crown over a patch of coastal prairie. People come into town to visit Rockport. They're here for the beaches mostly, but they'll start asking around like, hey, what else is there to do in Rockport? You're probably going to hear about the big tree. Go see the big tree. It's a, a live oak tree, Kirkus virginiana. Just looking at it, you kind of are in awe. The tree stands 44 feet tall with an 89-foot crown spread. The circumference of the trunk is 35 feet. It's one of the biggest live oaks in the state and nation. To come here and see it in person is just completely different than seeing a picture of it. You think, oh, yeah, it's just a tree, but it's not. Uh, people in Rockport know this tree and, and love it. Its gnarled branches are supported by braces and cables. A lightning rod protects it during thunderstorms. Over the centuries, it has survived destructive hurricanes, fires, war, and ever-spreading coastal settlement. It has seen the coming and going of Native Americans, European explorers, and Texas settlers. I think people can learn from it. In 2017, we had Hurricane Harvey hit Rockport, and that really was a huge hit to the economy to the town itself. And I think if they come here and see that the big tree survived that, it just kind of reinforces that thought in them. Like, okay, I, I can do this. Quite honestly, when I was younger, it was just an old tree. Uh, but through some of our experiences here in Lamar and becoming part of the community, it's kind of burned in my heart now. Harvey was a cat for, it was just catastrophic to our oak tree population. You know, the roads were just covered with debris. And the question on everybody's mind is, is the big tree still standing? I still remember the radio call across the fire net. Big tree still standing, big tree still standing. <laughs> so. It was quite desolate looking, but it was here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
My husband and I started dating in 1961. This is one of the first places we came to. So every time we get to Rockport, we come to see the big tree to see how the girl is doing. I say she's a girl. <laughs> when you're first dating, there's lots of things that you think about. And so this is one of the first things that we actually went to see together. We didn't know you were coming to see all this, did you? What do you remember about it? When did you first see it? Probably in the 19, late 1960s. It's a certificate of authenticity of the big tree. When they put these out, it was kind of a donation to fund the restoration and upkeep of the big tree. Every summer, we'd come down here to stay at Goose Island State Park because my dad loved to fish, and we spent a lot of time down, down here at, over the years. Back before this fence was here, I remember climbing up in the big tree. I just felt real enamored with this tree for how old it is, how long it's been around. It's really something. <laughs> it still looks the same as it did. 50-something years ago, but it's still growing. Hi. The Big Tree is definitely something you have to see if you're in the Rockport area, if you're coming through Lamar, if you see Goose Island, definitely come to the Big Tree. It's great to see. Here in Texas, our legendary trees stand tall. They help us remember our roots. They can grace us with their natural beauty and fill us with awe. They inspire us to tap into our own resilience and strength when facing life's storms. Trees are our common heritage. They bring us together. And they are something to cherish, honor, and protect. Every tree in Texas has a story. So next time you pass one by, stop and spend some time with it. One day, it too may be one of our famous trees of Texas.